like for example, knowing students, here's a question right. for you. How do you, what are some suggestions or strategies for teachers to do this? Right? Like, cause I know we can kind of dig into like, what does that mean? But like, what are some ways that teachers can do this where you have the Nick Sabans of the world and then, you Love know, uh, the opposite personalities, what are some ways that we can do that? Yeah. So, all right, I'm going to start with that last part first. Like if you, if, if the question is how do I know my students better? Um, you have to be intentional about that. You have to talk yeah. to them yeah. and you have to ask them questions um, like uh, be, be, uh, be a student of your students, right? Like a ask them uh, things that aren't related to your subject area. Mm -hmm. What are your hobbies? What are your interests? What team are you on? Um, and, and then look, if you have a terrible memory, like I do, well, then make a spreadsheet or keep notes like right. not, don't interrogate the kid and write it down in front of them. But like, keep notes and remember, uh, uh, George is really fascinated with college football. So right. after the game, look at him and say, Oh, my gosh, did you see that interception? Right. That is knowing and that provides a connection with him. And that itself won't make him learn math better, but it will lower his guard a little bit it will it will put him in a place where he can be receptive to the other things you do as part of teaching mm -hmm. uh, and, and and this is the thing george like humans are incredibly complex so there isn't yeah. one thing to do and you said earlier different uh, so teachers need to uh, there's nothing wrong with teachers having different personality types and different right. approaches themselves so just because you're gruff doesn't mean you're hateful to kids, right? right? Right. And so maybe there are kids that that's what they actually connect with. So I want to say something I, I said on the short broadcast is if you treat, no matter what your personality is or your approach, if you treat each of your students with dignity all right. the time, then your style is fine. Right. Um, and, and to your to your bigger question, do these things hold equal weight? Like my research in the book wasn't intended to explore how these things interact with each other and which is more important. It, it, it's, it's meant, it was meant as an exploration, like to, to right. notice. Um, so what I would say is um, if you uh, describe someone, uh, so your example was someone who is good at instruction, right? Really good at planning, but doesn't know how to know students the right. argument would actually be they're not teaching right like that's not yeah, all that's right. of teaching it's incomplete that doesn't mean that it has no value but then there are some things on here that the research and what the profession expects of a teacher there are a couple of them that i think a lot of times get lost i mentioned reflection earlier we talk about the importance of reflection but how many how often I don't know if you've ever heard of someone getting written up because they weren't reflective enough. Right. I mean, that would right. shock me. Like, no, you right. don't write someone up for that. You write them up because they're insubordinate because they didn't do their lesson plans or something like that. Right. But research says if you're not reflecting, you're not doing all of teaching. And, and right. that's really the point is there's it's so vastly complex. And there's a mismatch between the complexity of teaching and the rights and privileges that are afforded the professionals that do this other professions you know are, are very complex and right. then there's a better match